Right now, this will tell us. And that's pretty conclusive. Still going. Close. Oh, wow. I think he got it down. How strong is he? Welcome back to another week of the Pick and Go Rugby Podcast, Punters. Thanks for joining us as we get set to recap all the action from a pretty eventful weekend in the Rugby Championship and the opening round of the Bunnings NPC. And then we've got a lot more to dive into with another huge weekend of footy coming up in uh, just a couple of days' time. I'm uh, Patrick Jones, joining you from a remote location, as you can see if you're watching on YouTube. And by the magic of the internet, joining us from the studio in Petone, the dynamic duo of Paul Marty and Richard Laddie. How are you two feeling, chaps? Very good, thank you. A lot of heat being brought in early from Paul, so I'm expecting the, the performance uh, from the man on my right. Well, I, I don't want to say it, but Patrick's there because he's in witness protection because of the dis disparaging comments he's made about the All Black squad. I, uh, I cannot confirm those feelings. rumors. I'm, I'm, a, I'm up in Shield country, getting, getting a bit of the Shield fever ahead of the first challenge of the, the season on Friday night, but we'll... We'll get to that in a bit. We do need to, before that, unfortunately, or fortunately for any South African viewers who have made it back for the second week in a row, recap uh, all the events from Mbomela on a Sunday morning New Zealand time as the Springboks ground the All Blacks into dust, I think is probably the best way to put it en route to a fairly routine victory. Um, Richard, you were up at three o'clock in the morning as well, watching all, all the events there. What, what were the first uh, thoughts in your head as you watched that performance from the Springboks? Um... Well, as an All Blacks fan and someone who backed the All Blacks, it was um, frustration probably. Um, it was just uh, they, the All Blacks just had had. I don't I, I don't know why, but I I bet I bet with my you back the all I bet with my heart and not my head, <laughs> and and um, I just had a feeling. I did say I thought they were going to win one game in the series, and uh, they didn't. Um, so yeah, it's frustration. Um, just questions. So many questions. I mean, how have they not learnt to uh, to deal with this rushing defence? Um, uh, you know, after all these sort of, we've seen it time and time again now, dating back to that, in particular that 2019 uh, semi-final against England, and uh, they're just on the back foot. Uh, didn't really look like scoring at all. There was a couple of players that at half time you I would have hardly, if it wasn't for Will Jordan kicking the ball out in the full there, I wouldn't have even <laughs> known he was on the field. Um, yeah, just you'll yeah, be shout, in, shout out to the spring box really brilliant, brilliant performance just controlled the game so well and and um well deserved winners and and probably could have easily been a 20 30 point loss for all that so I remember you know a few years ago uh the um South Africa going down 57 nil at um North Harbour Stadium I think it was so, you know you wouldn't have been long time to ago. See something like that long time ago you'll be in witness yeah. protection next week <laughs> after those comments I like to focus on the positive so we'll look at the spring box side. <laughs> well, that's where you've got to look for positives. Defensively, they were very, very aggressive while still being well organised. They, the, the line came up fast. They they were sort of hunting in packs. Every time an All Black um, got up to the defensive line, it looked like there were three or four spring box there ready to tackle, and yet there were no holes in their defensive line. It sort of reminded me of the Penrith Panthers defense from last season when they won the NRL uh, championship. It was very much that way. And it was very, very hard for the All Blacks to gain uh, over the advantage line. Um, I, I don't understand. It's a very simple yet effective game plan by the Springboks. They utilize their big forwards, not just the eight that start, but the six that they've got coming off the bench. They pressure the All Blacks into mistakes. Uh, and when they're down uh, on attack, more than not, they pick up points. Fairly simple, but very, very effective. And they executed it very, very well. Um, yeah, there are a number of standouts for the Springboks. They played very, very well. Um, thoroughly deserved their win. And I, I don't know if you can, if you're an All Black fan, I don't know if you can turn this around in the space of seven days. So I don't know where Rissy's going to put his money this weekend, but I'm hoping he's going to get some back. What were you thinking last week? Wow. Did you have a few beers? Uh, I had a few beers on Saturday night, but uh, nothing nothing too wild. I just, you know, I just thought 
it's the All Blacks, they're down, you know, they don't stay down for too long, and we're just we're so used to them sort of fighting back. But no, there was no, there was no, um, no fight back there. And it, if this was a boxing match, the referee would be going six, seven. Good boxing analogy. Yeah, yeah the, I, I'm pretty much in agreement with you too. Like I thought the the score and certainly flattered the All Blacks if it wasn't for those couple of moments of individual brilliance by Bodie returning that kick from the end goal, and then Artie getting the turnover penalty when, when the Springboks bearing down on the All Blacks line in the first half. It could have easily been sort of a 25-point game at half time if the Springboks had converted those opportunities. And it all just comes down to me, um, sort of the execution of the game plan by the two sides, right? Like, we've, we've said a few things about the Springboks maybe not offering the most out wide or being the most creative with their game plan in, in this game. But it's because they haven't needed to be. Like, <laughs> they know what they need to do to the All Blacks. And every player has a role to fulfill and they do it to perfection like look at malcolm marx he was out there just absolutely destroying the all blacks breakdown um peter steph de toy is 100 percent back i was thinking at one stage it looked like the springboks were defending with about 18 guys on the field and i think that was just because just steph de toy does the work of three or four men out there his work rate of defense is immense um can we just talk about that like can you am offload for the next 45 minutes or so <laughs> they made that look <laughs> Yeah, they, they, yeah. Um, no, we talked about the offloads and the way that, uh, that game a couple of years, or was last year, was it? Eh? Mm, and done yeah. it again. But you, you watched the replay of it, it's incredible, eh? You know, he, he got fully turned around and just the, the vision yeah. to be able to see and um, for Arenze to sort of be there on the like running that line on the outside. It was just oh, beautiful. It was beautiful to watch. Mm, yeah, like he's got three All Blacks and one Springbok there and running the support line. So he has to pretty much nail the pass and he, he never looked like he was going to do anything but hit Arenza right on the chest with that. Um, yeah, the man is just an absolute magician. I think he's probably the best player in the world on current form. So yeah, you got to got to give a shout. I mean, I could go on all day shouting out Springboks here, but it's, yeah, just again, it's that system. They they know they can shut the All Blacks down by getting up in their faces that the, the, I after everything we've seen from the All Blacks these last four tests, I'm sure it'll be the same in Johannesburg. They, they're they not going to expect the All Blacks to have pulled a brand new strategy or a plan B out of their back pocket. So I'm sure we'll see the same massive Springbok forward pack getting up in the All Blacks faces and a lot of flinging the ball wide and desperate hope that something good happens when the next man gets a stand on the ball. But yeah, it's yeah, you got to, got to, I mean, it's the, the system that Erasmus and Nina were in that Springbok backroom coaching staff have built since. I mean, you know, you talk about 57 nil. That was, it was only five and a half years ago. It wasn't forever ago. So yeah. the, the turnaround, yeah, and I mean, that, that performance from the All Blacks felt as deflating. It was, yeah, they, they were never in the game. Not, not even, didn't even look like scoring a try until that last minute break by Caleb Clark. So yeah, it's just full credit to the Springboks for yeah, one of the, the best defensive performances I've seen on a rugby field in a long and, time. And that on the back of, losing Faf to Clerk in mm. basically the first minute of the game, there was a, a chance that that could have upset their um, sort of game plan, especially the fact that they only had two back reserves on the bench. There was a, a chance there for the All Blacks to maybe pile on some pressure as soon as he came on. But when you're playing behind that sort of pack, um, it's very hard for the opposition to pressure uh, the halfback. So I thought Hendricks that came on. He was awesome. He, yeah. You know, he, he wouldn't have been expecting to come on in the first minute, but he came on as if he was ready to go. Um, and he got a, a gun ride behind that uh, Springbok pack. It just, well, it just speak, it speaks to that system again, right? Like he knew what his job was. He didn't have to panic. And I'm sure he knew exactly what he was supposed to do with the ball when he came on there. I mean, put some great box kicks up. He, his defensive work as well was immense. Uh, yeah. and um, it's, Well, that's it when... When you've got a very, very simple game plan, players can come and slot in mm. and the machine I, keeps turning over. I don't think it's simple. It's just very well executed. Like they've, they've got a coaching staff who have obviously clearly communicated these ideas to their players incredibly well. So no one's, you know, like everyone knew they were going to be putting up high balls into the All Blacks 22, but somehow the Springboks first three scoring players all still came from high balls into the Springboks 22. So. Yeah, I guess simple is probably not the right word. Mm. Um, it's, uh, as you say, it's probably about the communication um, and all of the players know mm. exactly what their job is and they're ready to go when the whistle blows to start the game, whether they're on the bench or they're on the field. 
So because I'm, yeah. I mean, you saw in that one moment of brilliance from Bodie where he was returning that kick. Like if the Springboks kick chase wasn't on all game and up in the face and had support there, you know that game can get really wrong. You can concede big meters on the counter attack, but that outside of that one instance, which was probably an outlier because it was a 50-22 rather than a contestable kick. It, yeah, they never can't think of any other moments where All Blacks got loose kick, returning kicks for sure. Yeah, but um, there you didn't uh, load up yeah. the. Well, sorry, was that I was going to say? It was, just a, it was a clinic. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, no, no one because uh, just back to Faith going down injured in the first minute. The All Blacks did jump into dollar seventy five favourites when that happened. Uh, so it was. Thank you. Yeah. My, my, my money was already on. That's so. probably probably his money that moved the market. To be fair. No, it's not me. But um yeah, when that when that when 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 the clip went down, I thought, here we go, you know, could have been a chance with two two be- two uh two backs on the bench, but no, it wasn't to be. Um there was still, I mean not many positives. There's still probably a couple of positives to take from the game for um for the the all blacks in particular. I thought their rolling mall defense was really good. It was an area we talked about and we thought that um mm-hmm. they might get a bit looked over. Um, so it looked a bit more, a bit tighter, um, but unfortunately, obviously, the scrum wasn't great to sort of balance that out and yeah, a few other things. Well, plenty of other things that didn't go that way. Yeah, I mean, a big positive for me from that game was Adi Sevier was born in New Zealand, so he's still available for all that selection. So, you know, okay, but yeah, the, the, the mall defence, obviously, we were all concerned. I mean, I had several bets on Malcolm Marks to score different amounts and times of tries. So uh, unfortunately he couldn't get a lot across the line, but yeah. He did, but, he did everything but. Yeah, mm. oh, he was sensational. He was, yeah, no, absolutely gun. Yeah, yeah, I mean, for him to not be starting again this week, which is, we might as well move on to the Alex Park text now. I don't think we need to wallow for too much longer, as I'm sure plenty plen- of South Africans are enjoying seeing the, the shoe on the other foot this time. But um, yeah, I, I it was- Those punters, who backed South Africa one to twelve were slightly hard done by well not really because not South really Africa, because they, they probably should have won by mm. um, twenty or more uh, with the way the game went but mm. uh, in the end they got that uh, sort of last minute off another All Black era that mm. last minute try to was it Larue who uh, got mm-hmm. it down yeah. next to the post um, uh, to make it thirteen or over um, so you can sort of be hard done by slightly as a one to twelve but. but you probably, if they didn't score that try, you could say it the other way. 13 yeah. and over punters would have been hard done by if, it, if they hadn't won by 13 or more. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was on the 1 to 12. And if you were on the 13 plus, when Caleb Clark goes the other way and puts Shannon Frizzell in the corner, you would have been absolutely ropeable as a 13 plus punter because the All Blacks had no right to be scoring a try after that attacking performance. So I think, yeah, that was that was a bit of the, the gambling gods setting, setting things right and making sure that South Africa got the 13 plus because by, by every other metric, but Bar the scoreboard at that stage, it was absolutely a twenty-plus point victory. I'd say if you were if we were scoring it. So yeah, but we'll uh, move on to Alice Park because we were just talking about Malcolm Marks, who was certainly I think he was named man of the match, and it was one of the standout performances in a in a pack full of standout Springboks. But he's back to the bench this week with the, his mates from the Bomb Squad. They're reunited uh, as Bongi and Bonami retakes the number two jersey. One of five changes for the Springboks as uh, they look to. A pile more pain on the All Blacks. Ox Nietzsche joins Bongi and Franz Malherb in the front row. Uh, Dwayne Vermeulen just ch- joining that pack again. Whoa, ho, ho. <laughs> Get any more intimidating? Yeah, then you got Jaden Hendricks uh, starting at nine, who essentially played the full game at nine, and uh, Jesse Creel comes onto the right wing for the suspended Kurt Lee Arenza. Um, I guess we're just expecting more of the same from the Springboks in the second test, right, fellas? That's going to be a case of tr- try and stop us if you can, which the All Blacks uh, very much have not proved they can do so far. Yeah, you'd imagine so. Why would you? Mm. Why would you? Um, why would you change your game plan after after that performance? Um, they were just everything sort of worked in their favour. Uh, they, they were, the wingers were throwing themselves up there and throwing mm-hmm. their bodies on the line. And I mean, Renze sort of um, paid for it in the end, uh, both physically and with the suspension. Uh, uh, it, it was pretty nasty <laughs> to, to see that yeah. one. I was a little, bit, a little bit concerned seeing that. So it was nice to see that he kind of, they both sort of were all right in the end. And um, I saw Bowden, there's a post that says saying Bowden's all right. But yeah, they'll, they'll keep doing that. They'll put those kicks out. They'll put the pressure on. All Blacks will really need to um, do a bit of work on getting up and 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 defending those some of those some of those bombs. Uh, 
but yeah, it'll be it'll be one out, one out, box kick, uh, pressure on the back three, and and uh, the uh, it's hard to see the the result going uh, much differently to last week. To be honest, well, um, no slight on Imbanambi, um, and there's uh, there's nothing to suggest he won't have a good game. But Malcolm Marks is on another planet. He is he is just a he's like I don't I don't know. It'd be it, they are so lucky to have him coming off the bench. Um, so even though Imbanambi, I'm sure he'll play well. Um, Marx has just said it. What he had five or six turnovers. Um, five, I think. Yeah. Uh, and you just can't move him. He's he is their yeah. movable force. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think they sort of, I guess, lose slightly there. Um, for Mullen, um, very, very interested to see how he goes at number eight. I'm sure he'll have a huge game. So, um, as Patrick mentioned, Hendricks have basically played the whole of the first test, so it's not really a change to be fair with him starting. Um, Ox Nish, um, I don't know if you're born in South Africa and your parents name you Ox, are you like a 10 percent chance of starting for the All Blacks at some time in your life? I just think. Box, uh, spring box, sorry. <laughs> Didn't mind one or two of them. Yeah. Um, Maybe we should go over to South Africa and try and get a few. They've got so so many props and hookers. I'm sure we could find a few eligibility criteria like the Irish have done with to, to su such good effect. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know, I, I dipped out for a second there, but I, I take it you guys were just sort of going man by man through the pack and saying how <laughs> opposing it is. Yeah, basically just the changes that they've made mm. obviously yeah. two force changes with uh the suspension and the mm. injury um uh, but they've <laughs> i guess they've got an abundance of riches in the forwards that they can afford to make another three changes just because they want to mm. all right so we'll put the we'll look at this from an all blacks perspective then um you, you're the coaching staff you've you've just seen that first test in the Mamela. You, you've got to go out there and deal with it again this weekend what are you doing differently? What changes, game plan wise, personnel wise, you can have at it from any angle. What What are you doing differently this weekend if you're the All Blacks, Paul? Um, well, I think first of all, you you probably have to make some selection changes. Um, I don't think they will make uh, enough changes, but I'll be making changes to the loose forwards first. Uh, first of all, having Retallick not available sort of doesn't give them they don't have quite that sort of luxury of being able to shift the pack around as much as you we probably would like um, but i'd have Savia, papalee and barrett as my loose forward trio mm -hmm. i think we need a a bit more size in there we didn't really get a lot of go forward ball um so i'm just and i know they won't make that change because kane's the captain um, and it's nothing against him. I just think the game plan that we need to go in doesn't suit his style of play. And we need we need a, a few bigger bodies in there. So that's where I'd start anyway. So via Papali and Barrett. How times have changed. People are begging for Scott Barrett to jump on the blind side. <laughs> <laughs> just wouldn't have expected that six weeks ago. Horses for courses. Mm. How about well, you, Richard? What do you what do you think yeah, of that? The first Irish test when he was named at six, we were all begging that. But I had um, near Barrett to start at six as well um just he's playing brilliantly like he was one of the one of the one of the few all blacks that probably shown in that in that last game um with probably takiaho obviously Sevilla, and um, yeah in the backs there's a few people who were all right um i thought cape clark was probably um took his chance and and definitely deserves a, another go but you know they'll be they'll be sitting on the fitness of um geordie and neither geordie or Bowden have been actually ruled out yet have they officially I think Geordie's actually probably in a bigger doubt because it sounds like the ankle Bodie's yeah. like scanned up all right, but it's just a question of where they want to risk him. Yeah, yeah, I think um, so. You imagine Jordan will go to the fullback and then what they'll do in the. But yeah, it's probably just a little bit more size. Kira was, I thought Kira was really good in the third test against Ireland when he got his shot, but he, he got outplayed. Um, yeah, Kane definitely got outplayed by his, well, by. Um, Khaleesi and on, yeah, on the blind side for South Africa. So he's a, he's a man under a lot of pressure, and you know that they, they won't drop him. But it'd be um, 
at this game, but it'll be interesting to see whether someone gets a shot further down the line. As far as um, the game plan goes, it's a, you can't be giving away four scrum penalties in the first half, you know, like it's just anything, one or two free kicks as well, like it's just against this um, South African team. So work, uh, we, we already knew that would be the case, but work really needs to be done there. Maybe bring the Groot in. Um, I thought he brought a heap of energy off the bench, so I'd love to see him him get a start. Um, and then, I don't know, you've got to work on to be ball retention. Uh, it's just, I mean, it's the simple stuff, the handling errors and um, just, yeah, allowing Malcolm Marks to get over the ball and, and allowing that many turnovers. Uh, it's just so plenty of work for them to do. Uh, they obviously, they're not going to be able to sort of put their – uh, emphasis on everything, but if they can do some work on securing that those um, the, the ball from those high kicks and and um, the cleanouts at the at the rucks, they could go a step further to making it a closer battle. Yeah, I think they need to get a lot more direct. One of the the good um, adjustments we've actually seen from the All Blacks coaching staff in the last uh, year or so was after the uh, half time in the game in France and Paris uh, at the end of last year. The, the French rush defence was doing a similar sort of thing that we saw the All Blacks doing, where they were keeping the All Blacks behind the game line and putting a lot of pressure on them. And the All Blacks came out in the second half and kept things really tight and had the big ball carriers sort of get getting downfield there. That That's one way to nullify this rush defence, right? If you're not spreading the ball wide and sort of compounding the the issue as, as they get further and further up in your face, get a bit direct, take a bit of the sting out of that. That's going to come down to guys like Adi. I'd like to see Tupu Vai given more of a role. I think he's got all the talent in the world. I mean, that sort of comes to a wider point, I think. Maybe not this week, just because it is South Africa and Ellis Park, and it would be very harsh on some of these guys. But I think a reason why the All Blacks are in sort of the state is they haven't been bringing the the new blood through at the same rate they were from in the sort of golden period from 2011 to 2019. I think you're a year out from the World Cup. You sort of maybe, maybe you sacrifice a couple of tests here and there. Obviously, you don't want to lose the blenders low. But... You've got there's so much young talent in the squad. Guys like Ethan DeGroote, Fletcher Newell, uh, Samasoni, who was I think one of the better All Blacks on yes, Sunday. Awesome. Uh, Tupu Vai, Cullen Grace, who should be in the squad. Flau Fakatava, Quinta Paya, Lester Fanganuka, even Roger Tuivasa-Sheik, who's got obviously all the talent in the world, but not much um, experience in, in the international stage yet. I think we need to give these guys a bit of a sink or swim at some stage and say that this is all about t- France in 2023, and we're not going to win it by just trotting out the same team essentially every week. We need to see if these new guys are good enough to step up to international work, which I think they all are. Like Those names I rattled off, there's so much raw talent. Guys like Whanganuku, um, Cullen Grace, obviously. I mean, I've touched on two advice. So let, let those guys get their get their sea legs in international rugby. So by this time next year, you've hopefully got the, the, the bones of a team that can get back to the level we will no one expect all black teams to be at, but yeah, that's probably a bit, a bit of wishful thinking given the given the pressure that's on the current all black setup to win just every game ahead of them. Yeah, it's no shortage of pressure, that's for sure. Yeah, on the on the current race, and yeah, I think that's a great show. I mean, he he needs to get there at some point uh, yeah. in this rugby championship. I think they need to bring him in because um, we're, we're we're lacking something in that in that back row, and yeah. he was the form um, in the Super Rugby sort of back won the form back rowers and also um played brilliantly for the for the Maldives against Ireland. So yeah, we'd love to see him get a shot. Very, very hard to see the All Blacks winning. Sorry. Mm-hmm. This way. Yeah. Yes. Very, very hard. First of all, the cauldron of Alice Park. Um the fact the spring box are on a high. The All Blacks probably won't make changes. Um so it'll be more of the same. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And yes. one punter. Well, one punter you're agrees. Any, I don't think you're getting uh, getting any fight back from us, there, Paul. One punter agrees. Uh, mm. He's put fifty thousand on the spring box at a dollar forty-seven. Oh, wait. To win the match, so I can understand we'll, the confidence. We'll get to our official betting segment uh, towards the end of the podcast. But was there anything that? Jumped, obviously, the All Blacks, they're the biggest starting price they've been since we offered sports betting in 1996. Um, now, the fifth time they've been underdogs, all obviously against South Africa and South Africa, but the 270 that you can get for the All Blacks is the biggest biggest price they've ever been ahead of a test match. Richard, uh, 
the bookies managed to get you in last week with two dollars. You no interest in the two seventy this week. Nah, I'm steering clear of it. I'll be I'll be watching and hoping, but what I'll I'll, I'll, I'll steer, yeah, steer clear this week. Uh, incredible to see two seventy. You know, like um, I was thinking whether it was a too big of a too big of a line, too big of a a, a price. Um, it is still the All Blacks and all that, but yeah, I mean, what when was last time I lost four in a row? Was it ninety ninety eight? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Don't see it every day. Hypothetically, if this test match this weekend was in New Zealand, mm. would the All Blacks still be starting as underdogs? Well, what what are the, it's usually about a three point swing for home field, do they say? So, if you're going with maybe a six seven point swing, given Alice Park and everything, travel. Yeah, I'd I'd think maybe. Dollar like seventy, yeah. All Blacks one and a half, which. Yeah. Oh, well, give me the two dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Do, like, do you? I, I tell you, you think the four and a half should be bigger in the handicap pool? Uh, but yeah, I do, yes. To be fair, mm. I do. Yes. Like um, you're not. No one's talking you into taking the plus four and a half, right? No, no, no. Not from what I've seen uh, in that first test mm-hmm. and. Uh, I guess from what we've seen over the last sort of year and a half, um, you don't see a hell of a lot of changes going on. Um, and so I, I don't think they'll make changes that will give them the opportunity to win the game, the All Blacks. So, yeah. And I, I mean, I think you could probably say the balls bounce the All Blacks way, probably by large part in a Miller, right? Like you think of obviously Fafta Clerk going off injured in the first minute's not great for the Springboks. They, they certainly had more other try scoring opportunities that they didn't convert than the All Blacks. Like, could this get really ugly if the Springboks get their foot on the throat? And are we like, are we looking at an Albany situation in reverse here? If things start going downhill and it's a pretty demoralized All Blacks camp, maybe, you know, there's a few injuries, pretty thin back line, a couple of inexperienced guys out there, but. Uh, Anyone going to look at those sort of big alternate starts? No, nah, I'll be steering clear of them. I think it's still, it's still the All Blacks. It's still um, Africa don't win. You know, like the way they play, they don't sort of they win and they do what they have to do to win, but they often won't run away with the game as such. So, now nah, I'll be steering clear of the alternate starts myself. Okay. But I think then to my right might be. Um, I'll have some. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm the I'm the same. I think. Yeah. Let's take the thirteen and over first of all. Yeah, that, that's that's in the second plan for sure. I, I look, I'm, there's just yeah. If the, the Springboks get a couple of runaway tries, I could see them wanting to really sort of run up the score late on and at altitude, obviously everything else. I wouldn't shock me if this is sort of a 25, 30 point game. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, not not to. Not to get too downcast, I just can't. Yeah, can't see the the Blacks scoring. Uh, it's mainly I just think the Blacks will be lucky to score more than ten or so points, right? Like the Spring Oaks are going to defend so well. It's going to need just, some some moments mm, of brilliance, um, which mm. they sort of lacked. I mean, we saw it. We saw a, li- a little bit of Watson's store, you know, that little uh, Adi Adi short ball to Will Jordan, mm. and he got tripped. he just got ankle tapped. But you know what? You know, if he hadn't been ankle tapped, he may, may have gone the way whole mm. way. It was the, yeah the Bowden Barrett um, the Bowden Barrett Geordie Barrett sort of counter attack from the from the kick was that when uh, uh, Akira did the forward pass yeah and if yeah. I think Akira had Caleb on his on his left just on the touch line and um, Andre Pollard was there but there is a chance if Akira goes left instead of right there Caleb breaks that tackle and is away but yeah at the same time it was just moments of brilliance they're waiting mm, on and they just had the execution yeah. so hopefully. And like, Week they can execute a little bit better and and uh, yeah put on a bit more of a show. But from what we to saw, to be completely honest though, I've got a lot more faith in the South African coaching staff identifying areas to improve from one week to another. After like the th- that you look at the three uh, All Blacks versus Ireland tests, it was Ireland who were making the week to week gains there. So yeah. I think yeah, I think you'll see South Africa probably pick up a bit of low hanging fruit and improve their game there. So yeah, we'll, we'll get to it when we get to our staking plan. But I think. I'd be feeling pretty good if I was a, a Springbok fan or better at the moment. That's for sure. You should be. Yeah, I, I did find a little a little bit. I, I, it's not actually in my official stake. Oh, maybe it might. Is it? Yeah, it might be actually. 
Um, both teams to score a try, no, five dollars twenty-five. Um, and um, the first score of the game to be a South Africa try, paying four dollars eighty, which has uh, happened in the last four tests. The, the opposition have scored the first. The first points have been opposition try. So, or, or was it a penalty? No, it was a try. It was, it was, the, well, it was a look, can you air moment of magic, as it shall henceforth be known. But. <laughs> Uh, you're the president of the Lacanio M uh, fan club. I don't think I can claim that. It's the New Zealand fan club. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm <laughs> the New Zealand leader of the New Zealand chapter, that's for sure. So, couple, yeah. couple um, of nice little value bets there. Um, if you do think it's going to be not a great game for the All Blacks, absolutely. I do. Yeah, the no, not both teams score a try. No, I'll, I'll happily take more than five bucks for that. That's for sure. So, it was, yeah, um, it was should have. Yeah, it was very close in the last game and. As I said, we've sort of mm. had our yeah. moments, but the execution wasn't there. So mm. unless there's a bit and of work I mean, done. That is also like the Springboks. They have such a, a great work rate in their pack. Like, of course, Jasper Visa was there to just get the, the um, tap on Will Jordan's ankle. Yeah. And, you know, they were they were back covering really well for the the Bodie to Geordie break. Like, maybe another international team, they don't quite have so many men back and that is an easier pass for a carrier to put just the man on his inside away there to score. So that, that all factors in but um, before before I get too down in the dumps, do we want to head over to Mendoza and touch quickly on the Argentina versus Wallabies game? Um, because, boy, Dave Rennie must have smashed a few mirrors during his time or something. The, right, the Wallabies are going down. It's still got the win, but Quade Cooper, unfortunately, obviously, Samu Karebi has done as well, tearing his ACL in the Com games. Um, thoughts with Michael Oper, obviously, big call to withdraw himself from contention for these two tests there. So hopefully he can... Uh, get his mind and body right and be back doing what he does so well for the Wallabies in the near future. But the Wallabies are still favourites um, for this week's test. I don't know. Did you see enough from them in uh, the game in Mendoza, Richard, to justify backing them again, even with all these injuries? Um, in the head-to-head market, yes, but maybe not with the big big line. I was on um, 13 plus uh, on the game on Sunday morning, and I can tell you it was one of the more stressful winning bets I've had in a very long time. Um, the, I don't know if you guys watched, but it was about five minutes of extra time, and they were both trying to mm-hmm. um, pin, pin it to the corner to get the, the bonus point try. Um, and then, yeah, and then Australia scored a try, and then they went back and they checked the full pass, and I was just, yeah, I just couldn't take it. But, yeah, I think head-to-head, they seem like they've, um, even with the injuries, like they've got... Um, some players who are playing some great footy. I mean, a guy we talk about a lot on this podcast, who, but who was absolutely sensational the other day was um, Rob Valentini. Um, mm. uh, he's just a, a joy to watch. He's everywhere on on with ball in hand and on a, on on defence. Um, I thought Tom Wright was brilliant. Uh, I think he got his first start in the fullback in the Wallabies jersey, and um, he with a few sort of a few injuries in that area, and uh, he very much took the opportunity with two hands and played played very well. Um, Darcy Swain back from injury and yeah, another one who was he was brilliant. Like, he played played so well and um probably the best on the park for them and Flau Flangler as well. So yeah, there's plenty of plenty of talent there. Um providing they don't lose any more injuries. You, you did feel for Quake Cooper, eh? That was tough yeah. to watch. But um Especially that's yeah. like a that's a year long injury now and with the World Cup yeah. just over here. Hey, that's pretty devastating. Yeah. Is that the same injury that Dan Carter Mm-hmm. Got, uh, in his career and how long did it take was it a uh, 12 months for him as well yeah it's about i, I can't remember exactly how long dan was out for but yeah, yeah achilles they're, they're not easy especially quaid he's now in his 30s it certainly takes a little, yeah. little while like thinking the nba kevin durant did it in the finals against toronto and he was out for more than a year so yeah so yeah, yeah he, he'll obviously be gone for a while um mm. hodge came off the bench played played pretty well he's sort of proved his utility with that team so we then they'll go with him i presume lola is over over there as well mm-hmm. yeah um so i'd probably rather see lola ceo start and then um hodge come off the bench so i think i'll be um i, I definitely take them in head to head uh what are they paying be, might be a good little um dollar 37 yeah yeah great great little multi to league because i think they're that they're they've I mean, there's plenty for the Pumas to like, um, but I think Australia should be too good. But I, I won't be jumping into the, the, the point start there. 
How about you, Paul? Um, I'm sure you can you can get two dollars zero one for Australia, South Africa, both multied up. Is that how you're kicking off all your multis on Sunday? Yeah, I do like it. Um, I, I guess if there's a good thing to come out of this for Dave Rennie and the Wallabies, it's the fact they're probably they're uncovering um, some depth that maybe they wouldn't have have exposed if not for all the injuries that they picked up, not just last week, but uh, prior to that test match as well. So he's getting a wee bit of depth in the squad. Um, I think what we saw was the skill level of the Wallabies was um, slightly more, I guess, at a consistently high level. Uh, the Pumas showed sort of glimpses every now and then of some very, very good skill. Uh, and then they just were let down at times by some uh, poor passing, um, poor defensive reads, um, but they're not that far away. So, yeah, if I'm taking a, a couple of heads to heads this weekend, it's the spring box into the Wallabies. Repeat what happened last week. Yeah, no, I I just think this Argentina team's not the Argentina team of a few years ago. Obviously, Nicolas Sanchez is a massive out, but they, they weren't convincing winning a home series against an understrength Scotland team. I think they have fallen off since they, they beat, got that test win over the All Blacks. So I'm sure the All Blacks uh, set up will be relishing a couple of dates with them in a few weeks' time if they can get out of Ellis Park in one piece. Um, before before we make our official best bets for the games, uh, for, for the round of NPC, we might as well, uh, for, for the round of the Rugby Championship, I've already got it on my brain. We do have to touch on the uh, Bunnings NPC, which obviously got underway down in New Zealand over the weekend. Uh, yeah, we, we'll run through it quickly because I know you guys have got got a, got a lunch to get to. What what uh what what stood out to you from the from round one though? Uh, I'll, I, I, anyone can take this one. What any highlights uh, from round one? Mm. Well, the big upsets. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Obviously, the Tanifa heading down and uh, oh no, uh, that was a was that up north? No, it was at Pukekura Park. Oh, Puk mm. what? Oh, right. Uh, yeah, so them upsetting, even though it was an understrength Taranaki side, um, still, uh, Taranaki went through unbeaten last season in a disrupted uh, competition. Uh, and so the Tanifa really, really did look good. And I thought uh, County's Manukau uh, mm. at uh, the Koei. Um, yeah, getting getting one over Richard's oh, Razorbacks. Indeed, yeah, yeah. It wasn't, wasn't a good week for my... Uh... Couple of my, the teams that I had quite high on my power rankings, and uh, sure. but you'll be very very happy with the way Canterbury went yes. to start the competition yeah. off. They yeah. were kind of cool. They were, yeah. I'd uh, yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't go into uh, score points, but um, you know, they, it's a good start considering there was a, a, a few big upsets from some of the um, the minnows of the comp. Uh, Canterbury would have been yeah very happy with that one. Yeah, they're now competition favourites. I think they're three dollars in their own market. They've jumped Tasman, who made well. Didn't make overly hard work, but we're, we're yeah. kept close by Southland on Sunday night. But we thought Southland were going to be mm -hmm. quite a good uh, side this year. And the troubles that they had to actually get to the game, I think yeah, just, exactly. just spotlights how much of an effort they put it. It was what, what did they do? They had to drive to Christchurch. They somehow ended fight. up in Parapara Umu on a, on a way to a game in <laughs> Tasman. So, yeah. In Tasman. So, Drive to Christchurch, Wellington. <laughs> get on a plane to on a flight to go to Wellington, which was then which diverted was, to, Palmerston, to North, Palmerston North, which was then, did they get a flight from Palmerston North to Kapiti? They took a bus, I think, from Palmerston North down to Wellington and then went back to Kapiti for a charter flight to get them to Blenheim. Get to like yeah. It, uh, yeah, but yeah. then to stay within seven against a Tasman team at home, um, that, that was huge. I've had seen how tough it is just to get a team of players from Eastbourne into Wellington City for a game. So, full credit for them to do that. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. You don't seem to have any trouble getting to Courtney Place. <laughs> Too old for Courtney Place, Paul. That, that's your territory. But no, yeah, I think Southland, uh, they've got to be hardened by that performance and could see them uh, knock a few teams off. So, we, we, we circled it. Well, the Lions have got to head down to Rugby Park in a couple of weeks. and. That was, uh, I think that was probably between that and the Hawks Bay Waikato game. Yeah. Obviously, Wellington Bay plenty. They were the two games that are for me. Both uh, plenty of tries, some some good footy play by all four sides. Plenty of highlights. Few young guns. Um, I touched on in the preseason show, but Riley Higgins once again with a great 
first performance for the Lions, two tries, and just his, the timing, he seems to run great lines, always be in the right position. So I think, think he's got a big, uh, big thing to hit on. Ruben Love with two beautiful uh, try assists for Julian Severe early in the game as well. So shout out to Ruben. But uh, how are you feeling about your lines after that one, Paul? They got out of jail. They did get out of jail. Um, I guess it's you'd be very, very happy to get the points on, uh, on the bag, uh, but they're going to have to step up big time before they get to the teams like Canterbury, uh, yeah. like Auckland, like Tasman. Um, so at, at least they've got the win. They got the win. Uh, they can go back, have a look at the game, make some adjustments. They'll be better for it. It's a, it's a good That's positive right. spin to be putting on things after. So it seems like you saved all your positivity for the line section. So, um, and how about this weekend? Obviously, the game gets uh, the round gets underway tonight. We're we'll recording early on a Wednesday with Manor Two heading to the boat. Uh, Manor Two hosting Auckland at the Boneyard seven seven oh five pm tonight. Then we have got the first Shield Challenge of the season at McLean Park on Friday evening as uh, County's Monaco head down to. Uh, Napier for that one. I hope you took the dollar twenty when it was available on Monday, Paul, because the Magpies are now into a dollar eleven head to head there. Plenty of other short short favourites as we moved on down the weekend as well. Tasman a dollar thirty seven as they head down to Richards Otago. Um Waikato a dollar seventeen heading up to Northland. Could the Tanifa pull off another upset there? What 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 other games have you got your eyes on here, fellas, to kick off the go oh, to for round two? What what's got you most fired up? Uh, Shield Challenge, Hawks Bay, mm. lock and load, just get stuck in. Um, obviously, the dollar twenty was juicy. It's gone now. Is that you who's uh, moved that price? That, that is not me, no. <laughs> Running through a few multis for the weekend, I'm sure. Mm. Um, I don't want to look at Bay Plenty at home, dollar uh, ninety. Um, I, I expect the weekend really bounce back from Taranaki, eh? I, I, I think expect the weekend really bounce back. But yeah, yeah, that that does look like the game of the round. Um, Oh, and I don't mind Wellington plus the points. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we'll see an improved effort from them. Yeah, I think Canterbury, they're going to have to like, answer a lot of just different questions this week. It was actually a very impressive performance to score all those points against Manor 2, but they sort of, they didn't have to, it was a, a little bit like the Springboks in some ways. They, they were just so dominant up front. Like I think we're going to have to sort of induct Brody McAllister into the pick-and-go try-scoring hookers Hall of Fame this season, along with the likes of Philau Feingar and Ash Dixon, because I think he could have scored four of the if Canterbury didn't want to go away from the rolling ball there. And um, given they might, they have had those problems scoring points in the past, I think the rolling ball will be a very effective weapon for them all season. So, How good were the hookers more... going early on in the round? Mm. Yeah. Then I jinxed them by putting the tweet out on the TV Sport account on Sunday morning saying that there had already been six tries in the first four games. But yeah, um, just quietly wouldn't put, turn anyone, if you are listening to this podcast uh, early on before it's been released, I wouldn't put anyone out of. Uh, running Robbie Abel through all your same game multis or multis tonight, uh, named it number two for Auckland against Manawa 2. We saw Auckland go to the rolling ball a little bit once they got down against North Harbour, so I think they'll uh, they'll stick to that again this week. Auckland have named a pre- pretty uh, understrength side. They've got a few guys the week off with this uh, midweek, back to the midweek format, so maybe after seeing what Canterbury did to Manawa 2, more of the same from Auckland, I'm sure. Anything else you guys want to touch on before we get to some best bets? No, I don't think so. Yeah, just looking mm. forward to the round. Tago Tasman, I reckon the boys are going to bounce back from that uh, heartbreaking loss to counties. So I was on um, some alternative point starts in that game, and they were just they got rolling late. They got rolling late in the game, and uh, I thought that we, uh, well, the Tago were in in for money, and I, I, I was in the money. But uh, yeah, awesome, awesome to see uh, counties get up, and it's going to be a great, great comp. Um, and yeah, bad plenty Karanaki. Jaranaki have won uh, nine or last 11 in the last two straight, and last year um, they won 55-28. So I think we'll see a bounce back from Taranaki there, and I might be jumping into uh, 13 plus at uh, $4.20. Uh, yeah. I think, all right, let's uh, give the punters our best bets for the week then, fellas. Plenty to pick from. We'll start in the rugby championship. Richard, the, the flame of optimism in the Pick and Go podcast, what's your best bet this weekend? I'm not betting with my head or my heart, but I'm just uh, following some some stats. Uh, I'm going to go there under 46 and a half points. Uh, four of the last five games have been under that between these two teams. And I know you two have both said that you think they could, the staff could, could run away with it. But even if they do run away with it, the Elbex team didn't look like scoring too many points last week. So I thought the line was um, quite 
enticing for that. So yeah, under 46 and a half, a dollar 82. Yeah, don't mind that. South Africa probably score 43 and you'd still be feeling pretty safe. What's your best bet, Paul? South Africa 13 and over, three dollars and forty cents. Get on. What? What's happened to you? Uh, uh, I'm uh, I'm just taking South Africa half time, full time, $1.85. dollar eighty five. Yeah, no, they they um, Paul's today. already already given us a good bit of value with his best bet. Uh, what what's a value bet across the rugby championship you like the look of, Paul? Uh, in Banambi to score a try. Yeah, uh, the markets aren't up yet, so no. There you go. And and your value bet, Richard? I mentioned it before. Um, first score of the game, South Africa try at four dollars eighty. Nice. I, I uh, had the 13 plus sort of noted down with the bonus back in play. I think that is a very nice bet, but I'll uh, go to an old favourite and the winning team in margin 10 point market, South Africa 11 to 20, $4.20. That could be. That was uh, in, in the red zone uh, last weekend and could very well see that again, although I'd be more worried about the, the 21 to 30 side of that than the 1 to 10 or so that. Um, yeah, right. And. Uh, we, we're still we're still searching for the uh, the elusive pick and go same game multi, so we're gonna gonna keep trying. Uh, glorious zero for three if it last week. Um, I'll let you lead lead us off here, Richard. What what league are you checking in the pick and go same game multi for same game claim on the Springboks versus All Blacks? I'll go down the same route as my best bet, but I'll give us mm. a little bit more leeway. I'll go uh, under fifty two and a half points. All right. Yep, and then we'll get that in there. How about you, Paul? What what league are you throwing in for us? South Africa to win, dollar forty seven. I thought you might go that way. I, I did have the South Africa minus the four and a half no down, but I'll go with Makazoli but Pimpi to score a try. I think with Jesse Creel on the one wing, he's not quite so much the so kick chasing winger being more of a midfielder. So I think a lot of traffic will be going down at the left side for South Africa. And we saw Makazoli and Pimpi um, eat a couple of all blacks outside back for lunch in the year. Uh, last Saturday and I think it'll do the same again and get over so we got under 52 and a half into South Africa to win with Mpimpi scoring a try for you pick and go same Come game on. multi this weekend right and uh got, got, to, got to get a few bets for the NPC as well round two coming up what, what's what's your best bet on this uh the side of the world Richard going down to the mainland uh Canterbury minus eight and a half dollar 92 mm. over your line could we have a kebab bet? Wellington plus eight and a half. Kebab on. Have I got two kebab bets? I'm no, no, I'm, I'm saying I'm not. Oh, right, Paul. Wellington. <laughs> yeah, kebabs. Kebabs on. I'm, I'm taking the Magpies minus 14 and a half on Friday night. They'll, uh, they'll do what they do in Shield Challenges. Yeah, uh, I love that. I love that. Yeah, I think that's a great bet. Um, how about a bit of value for the punters, Richard? Uh, Northland Waikato, either team by seven, seven and a half and under, three or sixty. Good, up the Tunny Far. Love a try, bit. Impressed by Tunny Far. So, and yeah, they, 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 well. it's never easy to get up there. So, they obviously beat Waikato last year as well in one of the oh, that's crazy right. results. Yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. It was the only game they won in 2021 was a mad result yeah. over Waikato. So, maybe see a repeat on Saturday Avo up in Fongare. Uh, how about you, Paul? What's your value bet in the NPC? Bay of Plenty, 13 and over, 420. We're off, we're off the balls quickly. I'm, I'll, 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 be, I'll buy all your Taranaki shares if you're selling them. Um, yeah, I'm I'll going to go to the it. lunch box. Take, take it on Richard's Razorbacks. I'm going to go Tasman 1 to 12 at $3.10. I think Tasman will be good enough to get, get the win again here. They're still a very classy outfit, but maybe still working their way into the season. Not sure what Mitch Hunt's status is here. He was obviously not in the squad last week. So Tasman to get the job done, but not. In a in a runaway three dollars ten for the one to twelve there. Uh, how about an upset alert, guys? Uh, who's who's the best chance of? We've got some pretty short favourites here, so could be could be tough to find a an underdog that we like the look of. But what what have you found? Wellington three dollars. And you Richard? The Mighty Razor Bats three twenty. They've won uh, they won uh, two of three at home last season, and um, the only loss was to Taranaki, and it was a close loss. So <laughs> we all know how good Taranaki were last year. I hope for your sake our boss is listening to this week's podcast because uh, <laughs> um, I'm going with Wellington at three dollars as well, not with any sort of confidence. But there's no other. I'm not, I'll, no, I'll take the Tunny Far five bucks. I think Waikato yes. are very good, but on the Tunny Far, have a bit of a fun. 
that's a that's a bit we can all get behind. Uh, finally, we'll finish off obviously overball multi buster isn't play for all your league, your rugby, everything going on this weekend. Plenty of Farah Palmer Cup as well, so uh, you can get involved with all that. But what's your one multi and you're chucking through? All your multis, you can go rugby championship or NPC for this if you want. Richard, I'll let you lead us off. Uh, Hawks Bay minus seven and a half, dollar mm-hmm. thirty seven. Like that, uh, you Paul. Well, it's not up yet, um, but I take Southland over Otago. Uh-huh. No, that's not this week. Don't even say we don't prepare for this podcast. No, don't look because... at that. Don't look at that. The games are never all on the. On are they there. terrible? Well, the, the, the miss out game. Is it a Manawatu or an Auckland game? Manawatu are playing North Harbour on Sunday afternoon and Auckland are playing Southland. Those are the two games we don't have odds for yet because... Give me Southland time. plus the points. Uh-huh. All right, we'll, we'll make that happen. I'm going to take the Springboks minus four and a half as my multi-anchor. Is there anything... Should we chuck Australia in there for a fourth league for a... Yeah, go on. Yeah. The ball multi yeah. as well? All right, so just, just run, run me back over that again. So I've got it all... Got Southland plus the points once the odds are available for you, Paul. Richard, you're yep. taking Hawks Bay with seven and a half. Yeah. I'm taking the box minus four and a half, and we're chucking the Wallabies in there for good luck to get us in the qualifying for the promo. That'd be a nice little, nice nice little multi, I reckon. Yeah, no, should should get a good price for that. Um, appreciate you boys uh, jumping on with me to chat about all the footy coming up this weekend. Hopefully, I haven't kept you, kept you from your character too long. Um, plenty of insight there. Th- thanks for all, all the listeners or viewers for joining us. Uh, ho- hope you learned something a little bit. I'm sure you'll let us know in the comments if you didn't. But um, enjoy all the footy this weekend. And we'll be back in seven days' time to break down all the action from round two of the Rugby Championship in NPC M- and be a big Bunnings NPC M- preview next week because no rugby ch- week off for the Rugby Championship. So we can get really stuck into the good stuff down in New Zealand here. So until then, uh, we'll let you get back to it. Enjoy the footy, fellas, and have a good weekend. Up the right to base.